on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. For those of you that are not, for the ones that are not at the meeting, uh, this meeting is being recorded, but I just remembered to record it. So you didn't get the first part of the prayer. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, I just want to start off and there's a lot that I need to tell you about and a lot I need to, to, to explain to you. Um, so I'm so happy that many of you could join me this evening. I know many of you are a little confused and you're like, Angie, is this one we have to come to or is this just for if I have a question? And this was one that I really needed everybody to come to. So thank you so much for taking time. I know your schedules are crazy and busy um, to sit down so we can figure out what we're doing for the next half. Um, again, you know, you got the information about um, we're, we're extending the home study throughout the rest of the year. So you'll be finishing up the home study program there. And you should have gotten, okay, a copy of the calendar from January to May. I sent those out, I think, December 23rd. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get them out earlier. But anyway, um, and they went out in English and Spanish, okay. There's a couple special events on those calendars that I want you to really pay close attention to. Now, this is for those of you that your children are receiving their first Eucharist, okay? And you've received information from me before. I want to remind you that there's a first Eucharist book pickup this coming Saturday from 1030 a.m. to noon in Kildoff Hall. So you can pick up the um, books. Um, our meeting isn't until the end of the month on the 26th, but I wanted you to have the books ahead of time. I was going to make it the Saturday before, and I thought, you know, my luck will have a blizzard and then another blizzard, and you won't be able to get the books. So I figured I'd do it a little bit earlier in the month, okay? Next Tuesday, if you looked at, I also sent out um, the um, curriculum for every grade, and I did, I did the email according to your grades, all right, um, so that everybody didn't get all eight um, curriculums. Seventh and eighth grade, you didn't get one because your book only goes up to 12 chapters and you already have it. Um, the, um, um, the program for next week is to watch the Eucharistic Adoration. And that is going to be on January 12th, which is next Tuesday at six o'clock. I'm going to go a little bit more into detail about that when I go through, after I get through the rest of this um, information, okay? Um, and if you look when the calendars, uh, uh, for, especially for First Eucharist, there's First Eucharist parent meetings um, that are on there. So please pay attention to them. March 28th is the last week that is assigned as far as a chapter to take with your children. Um, but I did put on there that I know some of you have not been able to do everything because of, of them doing work from home with school, virtual learning, hybrid learning, in-school learning. So if you didn't get a chance to keep up with everything, work keep working on it and can just continue to go along. Um, as long as I think all the chapters are reviewed are, are completed by um, August 31st, okay, we should be okay. So that gives you some more time. Even though it's scheduled, it doesn't mean everything has to be done by that week. Just make sure everything's done by August 34th first so that we're ready to start for the following year. And hopefully the following year will be in person, okay? We have to keep our fingers crossed. I have my fingers and toes crossed. I'd cross my eyes, but then I wouldn't be able to see. Um, but anyway, I just want to also go over and remind you too that... Um, um, Father Jaime is very um, adamant about children learning their prayers. So the prayers that you should be teaching them and that they should know by heart, I would say, would be this, obviously the sign of the cross and how to make it. Um, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, and please make sure they know the act of contrition especially if your child is preparing for reconciliation. I know in previous years I said, no, you don't have to memorize it because there's a cheat sheet right there. But if you go to a different church, it's not there. But, you know, they should know the act of contrition. So please make sure you're working on those prayers also. This is an awful lot to, to dump on everybody. But um, just, and again, if they haven't memorized it, just keep saying them every night, you know, and repetition is the best way to learn something, just keep repeating it. Chapter reviews. 
I, there are about 50% of you that are going online and you are doing the chapter reviews and I'm getting progress reports as far as, you know, whether you've completed it. Some of you may be doing chapter reviews, but you're not using a username. If you're not doing a username and a password, you're not on the right website. Okay. Go back to the parent update that I said back at the beginning of December and the website is on there but you're gonna to have to call me and um, I have to do this with you and walk you through it because at this point in time, I need, to, I need to put in your password, okay, as the administrator. So if you are not have not started with the chapter re reviews online um, and submitting them online, please let me know if you need help with the username and, and the password. You should have usernames. Um, and some of you may have passwords that were sent to you but if that was during the summer, they may not still be effective. You can try them. If they're not, give me a call. I have called parents from home and walked them through it. It doesn't take long. Um, so just make sure that you, you know, if you're not doing it, please do so. Okay. Any questions? Anybody have any questions so far? The chapter reviews online, what, what email would that come through? Um, there was a parent update that was sent out in December. Well, actually, the past couple parent updates, okay. um, it has come through um, wh where you need to go online. So do you have the username and password? No. Okay. So what we can do is if you want to hang on. Um, Afterward. Uh, okay. Afterwards. Um, but we'll have to do it by phone because we have to get off of Zoom in order for okay. me to do it. But we can do it right tonight. Okay. Thank you, Angie. You're, you're welcome. Anybody else, if you need it, let me know. We can do it. Um, we can do it after this meeting. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Are we good to go? Oh, wait a minute. I got somebody waiting in the waiting room. Okay. I have a question. Okay. One second. Let me just mute. Okay. Okay. All right. Who's, who, who, who am I talking? Oh, hi, Mrs. Radcliffe. Hi. One question for you. Um, in terms of prayers for the first Eucharist, the, um, the act of contrition, since there's the traditional and the alternate, it, do we have to make sure that they know both of them or we may one will do. Either one will do. Okay. Okay. One is the one that I grew up in. I mean, I, I have it so memorized that, you know, I mean, I use that one. As long as it's an act of contrition, that's what they really need. Okay. So, At least one of them. <laughs> Whichever one you think is good, remember, you know, um, you know, when you go, oh my God, I am heartily sorry, you know, for having offended thee. That's kind of hard to remember. So whichever one you want to do with them, that would be fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Angie, you're getting the reports for the chapter reviews. Um, yes. Been track of like how they're graded, or is it just that they complete it? just that they complete it. I don't care. They do grade them. Okay. I don't care about the grade. I just go in and what I do is I check and then I check off. I have an attendance chart for each class. Okay. For each grade. And then for each, each chapter and I go in and I, okay. Chapter one, check chapter one, you're done. I don't, I don't check by grade. This is not the faith formation is not for, to grade them when, when they're faith. Okay. Um, but they do give me like, you know, how many, right. And I'll tell you, the kids have been doing great when the um, chapter reviews as far as knowledge and um, you know, what they're learning. So it's, it's really good. But, um, you know, no, I am just doing it just for attendance and, you know, just, just to have, I have to have something to validate that you did the program this year is basically what it is. And okay. what it is normally you come to class every week and then we take attendance. So we know you, you know, you, you, you've complied. So for this year, it's just to do the chapter review online. And what's nice about this program is you do it. And of course you don't get the results, which is no big deal because you're not being graded. Um, it comes directly to me. I wasn't sure how this was going to work, how the program was going to work. And all I could picture was everybody sending me a copy of their chapter review. And I would get 80 kids times how many chapters and all these chapter reviews coming into me through my email. But that's not how it works. It, 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 it submits it. I go into the system. I'm able to go into the assessments. I go to the progress report. It shows me and I just check everything off. 
Now, what I'm going to do after um, after after this week, this week has been, you know, you know how things are. First week you come back from vacation because the office was closed last week. Um, I am going to start going through, and anybody who has not started the chapter review, so I'm going to reach out and say, listen, you haven't started. Do you need help? You know, you know you, what, what can I do to help you? So that's what I'm going to do. If you don't hear from me, you're okay. And if you've been submitting them on that website with your username and password, you're good to go. If you want to double check, a couple of people said, are you getting mine? And I you go back and check. Yes, we've got them. Okay. So anybody who needs me to do that, that's not a problem. Okay. Any other questions? Are we good? We have 39 parents tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so I've got the Janigans and the Smothers. After this meeting, I'm going to get your phone numbers and then we're going to do, we're going to get you set up. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I want to go back. That that's all the stuff I need to tell you about as far as what's happening. You know, hopefully, did you did it, hopefully you enjoyed the tour of the church? Okay, if you didn't get to see it, it's still posted up on um, YouTube. Okay, because I'm going to use that also with come and see for for the adults who are going to learn about the Catholic faith and whether or not they want to um, join the Catholic faith. I do that tour of the church with those adults, so they'll be able. I don't have to do that anymore. They can just watch the video. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, the kids have had that tour before, um, but. You know, a lot of times they get distracted. So it's not a hard, it, you know, it's good to watch it over again. A couple of you have commented back about how much you learned or how much the children learned. So that was really good. Um, so what I also did was that I was very lucky. I don't know, again, the good Lord provides. That's all I can tell you, he provides. When I went into the vesting sacristy, there sat the monstrance. And I showed up the children and on the, on the um, tour, the monstrance, and I opened up the little door, the host, the large host goes in there, because that's what we're going to be talking about next week with this Eucharistic adoration, okay? And that's going to be, again, next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Now, you can come to that in person. It'll be in the main church. If it's too late for the kids because they're young and they got to get ready for bed, not a problem. Um, if you are still not sure about coming out with the kids in COVID, not a problem. It will be live streamed. If you can't watch it and can't do it Tuesday night because you've got other things going on, it's going to be uploaded to YouTube. Okay, so that you can watch this first Eucharistic adoration. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to show you two videos with explanations, okay? I also sent you the attachment that explains what a Eucharistic adoration is. Hopefully you've read through that. And some of the terms that are used, okay? I always have to double check what I'm doing and what I'm using. You know me and my notes. I have to have my notes along with me, okay? Um, Okay, um, when some of the terms, the um, the terms, the um, receptacle was called the Luna, the monstrance, okay, and the tabernacle. That was all shown to the kids at, during the tour of the church, okay? Oops. Um, okay, during the tour of the church. So um, you can go over those with them. You can even go back to the video if you want and go through that and show them what's going on. All right. Um, I will be sending out before next Tuesday or maybe even next Tuesday. I'm not sure. It depends on when I get all the information from father. Um, you will have a handout that will um, be sent to you. You can follow along with the prayers and what needs to be said and, and the guide so that as we go through that. Um, I'm just going to walk you through tonight with the service because adoration has not been done widely like it used to be, okay? You know, with me uh, growing up in pre-Vatican II, we did everything, you know, we, we went the whole 40 hours and there was adoration, you know, so, I mean, that's something that was kind of ingrained in me and I understood what was happening, 
So what's going to happen is there's going to be an opening song, and we're very fortunate because um, Danny Cahigas is going to lead us in song um, with his guitar, okay? The next part that we're going to see is that we're going to see Father, and Father's going to come from the, ta from the Eucharistic chapel, and I pointed that out in the tour of the church, and he's going to bring the... Um, the host, okay, uh, the consecrated host will be removed from the Eucharistic chapel, okay, and he will come up, and then he will kneel down and will be silent, okay. Um, this is a time where we're in God's presence, and what we need to do is place ourselves in God's presence. So what you want to do next Tuesday, whether you come in person or you're watching on TV or whenever you're watching, it should be a time where everything is quiet, the TV is off, Everything's quiet. We're not, you know, if you've got little ones and they're making noise, you need to go into a room where it's quiet and you and your child or whoever, whichever children you have enrolled in the program are sitting down and understanding this is just like being in church. Okay. Especially if you're watching from home. So we'll have a song. Then father will bring the, the, Euchar the um, Eucharist. Okay. The consecrated host, he's going to read a gospel. That's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting for him to choose what gospel he's going to um, talk about. And then he's going to do a little homily for the kids. Okay. And I said to him, father, these are elementary kids. Please remember their attention spans are not very long. The, the middle school um, adoration that they did lasted an hour. And I said, mm, not going to, not going to happen. Okay. We want to introduce these children to Eucharistic adoration. And that's, that's the purpose. And I'll, I'll explain why we want to do that too in a, in a few minutes. After we do the homily, then Father's going to say a prayer, and Danny will sing the song Tantum Ergo, which is Latin. Uh, I grew up pre-Vatican, so I learned the Mass in Latin and can sing this song in Latin. Um, and they do it in Latin because of the tradition behind it, okay? Um, and it's a, a, a song of homage to God, to Jesus, all right? After that, Father's going to do the benediction and the blessing, and he's going to hold up. He's going to he's going to put the um, I always call it the shawl, but it's not called a shawl. It's called the humeral veil. That's the cape that goes around him, and he doesn't even touch the monstrance with the host in it. He has the the um, material there to hold it up and to show all of us. All right, and give the blessing. And then after that, he's going to lead us in a prayer called the Divine Praises, or if you remember, Blessed Be God. And the reason, the reason that's the uh, that's the informal name for it, because every line begins with Blessed Be God, Blessed Be His Holy Name, Blessed Be Jesus, and, and we go through from there. Okay, so it, it should last about thirty minutes. Okay, so which is not that bad. Okay, um, but we want to make sure that kids understand what's happening there. Okay, now I'm going to switch screens again because, all right, be patient with me. I'm getting better at this stuff. I'm telling you, I really am. <laughs> okay, I want to share this. Okay, Eucharistic adoration. Why are we having it? Why are we even doing it? All right, and I'm going to give you some quotes from some saints and their thoughts on the Eucharist. St. Francis of Assisi tells us, in this world, I cannot see the most high son of God with my own eyes, except for his most holy body and blood. So when we do a Eucharistic adoration, we can actually see the presence of Jesus through the body and blood, through the bread. St. John of Vienne says, there is nothing so great as the Eucharist. If God had something more precious, he would have given it to us. So this is the greatest thing that God could possibly give us, and that's the Eucharist. And St. Maximilian Kolbe says, if angels could be jealous of men, they would be so for one reason, Holy Communion. We can receive it. They cannot. So why? Because we want to spend precious time in prayer in the presence of Jesus.
Well, we need to remember also, a Eucharistic adoration does not take the place of mass by any means, okay? It is not mass, all right? Um, we need to understand what real presence is. And what we're finding is, is that many people, many adults, don't actually know that the consecrated body of bread and wine is the actual body and blood of Jesus, all right? Um, sometimes the kids say, well, if I chew it, will it bleed in my mouth? Okay. Um, will it taste like blood? All right. Um, you know, um, sometimes people take communion and they throw it on the floor. If you've ever seen a, a, um, a priest or someone drop a host, life stops and we take care of that. Father picks it up and that has to be eaten by, by, the, by the extraordinary minister that is giving that out. When the wine, okay, one time Deacon Jim had wine that spilled. We stopped. We took the special cloths and put it over them. Those cloths are then laundered, okay, and the water that they're laundered in does not go through the washing machine and does not go through the sewer system because that's consecrated wine. It's the actual blood of Christ, okay? That water is then poured outside into the ground. Anything that's blessed or holy or consecrated, in order to get rid of it, it needs to go back into the ground. When I did the tour of the church, I hopefully explained that um, to them and to you, the sacrarium, that special sink that is not hooked up to the um, sewer system. We don't want any remnants of Jesus's body and blood going through the sewer system. We empty it into the sacrarium and that drain goes directly back into the ground. Okay. Um, some other religions say, well, we've received communion. You know, we have bread and we have grape juice and we get it in a little cup. Well, that's not a consecrated host. That is not the real body and blood of Jesus. It's a, it, it's a representation of it. And you're doing it, you know, okay, just like Jesus had bread and wine. But we as Catholics believe that that bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Jesus. Now, that's a, that's a hard concept to understand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two videos. I've got one for like little kids and one for some of the older kids. And I'm going to send you the links for these for both kids tomorrow for you to talk to your kids about this before they actually come to it next Tuesday. So give me a minute and we're going to share screens again. OK, the, the uh, videos are not long. OK, oh, and I, want to, I don't want to do that one yet. I want to do. Where is it? Adoration video and share the screen. Okay. This is a, this is the one for the younger kids. And you'll see it's only three and a half minutes. What is adoration? Adoration is the time that you spend with Jesus. Hey, Angie, I don't see anything. Yeah, the video is not showing. It just shows like the, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your screen. It was just showing the two links. Okay, wait a minute. So we see that. Just listen for right now. It's really faint. This 
special change that his called Trans's He tried doing like an alt tab. Okay. I don't know why you couldn't hear the, see that, but you can hear the, the it's it's much it's geared much better to the low, to to younger children, okay? This is the one for the older children. I don't know why that wouldn't show and why because I did everything I was supposed to. Um somebody gave me alt plus tab and I forget it. I I just blanked out. But let me see if the second one does. And if it doesn't, when you get these links tomorrow and you click on the link, you'll see it. So let me see if I can get this other one to come up. And if you can't see it, let me know right away and I'll just. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay. This one looks like it's working, yeah. Okay. The other one was just stuck in your Gmail window, so. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now you don't want to. I need to listen a minute so he can get first communion. Now they just put me in it. I don't know. I was already. I'm trying to. I don't even know how to get Damn, my. Video. I need you to mute, please. Jesus is spiritually present along with the bride and wine. 
because it's a hard one to get. But not exactly. Real definition now. Real presence means that in the Eucharist, the body and blood together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ and Christ is truly, really, and substantially contained. The Catechism clarifies that this is called real presence. Now, because God is really present in other ways, like nature, scripture, loving your neighbor, he certainly is. Blissful <laughs> present, not even present. In theological speak, we're talking about the difference between substance something is in themselves and accident, a contingent or non-essential attribute of something. Best demonstrated in everyone's favorite game, things about living, substance, or accident. Okay. So, accident. Being a union of body and soul. Or the definition of your humanity itself, so substance. But non-essential to your existence, so accident. Having an intellect and a will and being created in body. That is essential. Substance. Also must need to even ask substance. Thank you. So, what the church understands Jesus is doing is this. Accidental properties, look, smell, taste, etc. has actually been changed in substance. You can just ignore him and walk away because God is not an actual police officer. Right. But someone with the authority to arrest you says those words in the right context. Say the same, maybe feel the same. But you can pull her away for a second and start her all without just that short because the whole time is changing something. That's why the church came up with a special word to describe it. It's sensible to the taste. Money of Christ, the bread of wine, is not wine, even though the taste would have it so. So while our senses tell us that we see bread, our faith trusts what Jesus has done for us. Bread can be made from flesh and blood. If you think about it, you can't say that it does, but Jesus leaves it looking and tasting like bread and wine, so that we can receive the fullness of his person in, as the church says it, an unbloody way. Which makes the way we receive him and become one with him much more like the way a bride and groom become one at the wedding, and not like the way I did the steak one with the other. Exactly. But actually, that leads to an interesting point. There have been times when the Eucharist is like bread and wine, not the bread and wine. Classy. That's a very good point, by the way. There have been times in history, usually when people have been struggling with faith, the God reveals more presence in our life through accidents to change as well. So a communion comes to a belief. In some cases, basically be changed to flesh and blood. What's even more amazing is that your everyday run of the mill Eucharist gives us complete access to the totality of God. And the fact that the Okay, so you've got two versions there. Use whichever one is best for your children and for them to understand. Um, a lot of what they talked about, I also talked about in the tour of the church. So kind of relate that, 
you know, back and forth to them so that they're getting a good understanding of what real presence is. Um, on the younger version, um, you didn't get to see it, but they actually show a tree and then they show a table. Okay, the table is still the tree, it just is in a different form. And that's something that you're going to need to understand and you're going to need to really explain to them, um, you know, because it really is a hard concept, you know, and, and as you get older, it's your faith that believes it. But when you're seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, in your young teen years, it's, it's a little difficult to understand. Um, any questions on the videos? I'm going to send you both links, okay, and you can watch them again. I think they're really good. They're close and concise and to the point of, you know, getting an understanding for what ador Eucharistic adoration really is, and that the bread and wine are the real presence of Jesus. You know, in, in church, we have the real presence of Jesus um, in the Eucharistic chapel, in the tabernacle. I went over, like, if the door is closed, that means there's consecrated hosts in there and the light is on outside um, and then if we don't have that then we always have the book of the gospels which is the presence of God also so you know you can go through all those things with them um, after the um, Sarah, after the celebration what we're going to do is I'm going to if there's anybody that comes comes to this I'm going to try to do some immediate feedback with them you know, how, what, what did you learn? Did you enjoy it? What didn't you know? What do you know now? Um, you know, and see what spoke. So if you're watching it from home, I would appreciate any kind of feedback that you can give me from that comes from your kids or even yourselves. So email me, you know, just, uh, it doesn't have to be long. Just, you know, this is what we got from that. Or we, you know, we really enjoyed it. We really understood what it means because Eucharistic adoration is something we're gonna continue in the future, in future years for the kids to experience because that's something about their faith that they really need to understand. And the closer we are to Jesus and the closer we are in his presence, the better we are with him and his relationship. So that's what that's what you know. I really wanted to get together with everybody tonight about and just understanding what that Eucharistic adoration was. And you know, um, since we can't do it in the classroom, I have to depend on all of you to do that in your homes with your children. So, any questions? Nobody. Okay, those of you that joined us late, and I understand that sometimes, you know, you, things, you get tied up. The, um, this meeting is being recorded, okay, and um, um, it will be uploaded onto YouTube. So you can pull it up and get the first part of the meeting, okay? Any questions? Did I miss anything that anybody brought up in, in chat that I didn't see? Are we all good? All right, and let's just let's just end with a Hail Mary and to the Blessed Mother, who's the patroness of our country, to pray for our country, especially in light of events of today, and to keep us in her care. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dear Lady, keep us in your watch, under your care and in your watch. We pray for our country and we pray for all of our citizens so that we can work together to build this country up to what we need to be. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, um, listen, Chuck. Um, and uh, I'm going to call you, okay? And Mrs. Janigan, I'm going to call you, all right? Um, because I don't want you giving your phone numbers out on the because it'll be recording if I stop the record. Oh, no, I can stop the recording. So just hang on, yeah. Just hang on so you can give me your um, your um, phone numbers. Other than that, I have, we have, oh. wait a minute. Hi, Mrs. Stoffel. We're just ending the meeting, but it's going to be on YouTube, so you can catch it on there, okay? Um, we're just ending the meeting now. So thank you. We had 40 participants, and I'm so grateful and so thankful for all of you and your support and what you're doing to help us continue the faith formation program in your children. So God bless all of you, and Happy New Year. Bye-bye.
Thanks, Angie. Bye. And um, Andy, you're going to send a link, you said, for YouTube. I, I, I deeply apologize. Both, that's okay. Both videos I'm going to send to you so that you can even go over them again and then determine which one's going to be better for your child to watch. Okay. okay. I appreciate it. Thank you so oh, much. That, that, that'll come out tomorrow so you can do that ahead of time. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless. Angie, I put mine in there. Did you get my number? It's in there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Chuck, did you put yours in too? Yes, I sent it via private message. Okay. I will call you in a little bit, okay? Um, but you have to be at your computer. Okay. okay we are. Computer, I'm sorry. Duh. <laughs> yeah. We'll get it together. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Okay. 736. Okay, everybody. I'm signing off. Talk to you later. Thanks, Bye -bye. Angie. Great job. Great meeting. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much.